Research Rabbit or Connected Papers, which one should you use? So Research Rabbit is going to be free forever, and I love saying that. Free. It's not often that you get something for free. This is Research Rabbit, Reimagine Research. Oh, we like that. But here we can see that their mission is to have free access to this for researchers forever. Why? It's simple, really. They just want to do something good, I think. Stay tuned as we continue to uh, build tech that empowers researchers in new ways. So that is the first reason I think you should be using um, Research Rabbit, but it doesn't do everything perfectly. So stay around and I'll show you why I would actually use Connected Papers in some instances. Connected Papers is this here and uh, well, that's actually not it. This is the uh, front page here. And you can see that it's very simple. All you need to do is put in a keyword, a paper title, a DOI, or another identifier, and you build a graph. The pricing is, uh, you know, I don't think it's too bad. But once you start sort of like paying for different services and tools, it really adds up. It's something that generally PhD students can't really afford, whereas, you know, later stage academics could afford it. But I think there's probably something a bit better than connected papers at the moment out there. Um, so stay around and we'll talk about that. So let's have a look at comparing the two. So first of all, let's have a look at Research Rabbit. When you first log into Research Rabbit, you get this really simple bar over here. You can start a new collection. Um, you can also import all of your Zotero collection. And then these are the collections down here. You can also put them into different folders and files. Here it's uncategorized. Fine. I don't know why I would categorize it, but it's uncategorized at the moment. And here is something that I have uploaded. So I've uploaded nine papers in here. And this is where Research Rabbit, I think, a lot of people struggle with it. And there is a massive learning curve. That's one thing I'll say about this. Research Rabbit, massive learning curve. Connected papers little tiny learning curve because it's just a little bit more intuitive to create the graphs but once you get the graphs actually research rabbit makes more sense you'll see why in a minute so here we have a lots of uh, my papers and then you've got all of these options now the one thing that is really annoying about research rabbit is that as you start clicking you kind of lose track of what you're talking about what you're actually exploring how you should navigate all of this stuff it just kind of vomits stuff out and you're like oh it's so confusing here's graphs, his things, his lists, his everything you need. So I think with Research Rabbit, go through, click around, get used to the interface, but you need to go in with a game plan. For example, you could say, okay, I'm going to upload all of my papers and you can add papers down here or you can sync it with Zoltero. And then you say, you know what, I'm actually interested in what comes after this. So I'm going to explore later work. And that's how you kind of just really narrow down the power of this to make it actually user friendly. Because you can see we've got all of these things and once we start clicking on things, it gets annoying. So you click here and then this pops up and you're like, okay, well, I see all these. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll load more. And then there's all these graphs. You can grab, drag stuff around. All these people are connected in a certain way. I don't really know how they're connected. I think it's just they've published together, um, but that's not made absolutely clear. And then we can just have a look. Oh, okay, let's have a look at this dude. Okay, one, one selected person. Let's have a look at their published work. You can see it just goes on and on and on and on it gets bigger and bigger and now we've got a graph so here we've got uh my papers in green and then all of the ones that maybe i should know about here i think this is a citation tree that this one cites this one this one cites this one and that's about it really you can move them around which is fun to do but a little bit uh you know counterintuitive to what you're actually moving them about for. And look, you can see they all kind of move around together. So it's a nice interface. These ones clearly aren't connected, but still they're in, um, you know, a relatively uh, close field, I think. Um, or this one, Shira, is not connected at all to this research, but it's just in my research list. So this is saying, well, this one is not connected at all to anything you've actually done before. Anyway, you can see it just gets bigger and bigger and you can carry on clicking suggested authors again let's go to similar work and it just goes on and on and then to really sort of like change things up you have to kind of like you know get rid of that get rid of that and then just start again so what i like to do is start with a game plan whereas connected papers i think is much easier to navigate let's have a look at that so here is what you can create with connected papers it's just a little sort of like network map now Here's the biggest difference, I think, between Research Rabbit and Connected Papers, is this isn't a citation tree. This is something a little bit more powerful, and it's not 
obvious how you should use it right up. So if you click down here, you've got help. Click on help, bonk, and now you say, okay, papers are arranged according to their similarity. So this is not a citation tree. The node size is the number of citations. So we want to look at big nodes. And also the node color is, oh, we've off it. The node color is the publishing year. So we want a dark, large circle. So something like this would be really good. And then similar papers have strong connecting lines and cluster together. So if you're using multiple tools and you're looking at citation trees, that's just where one paper cites another and it just connects it like a web, you come to connected papers and you can start sort of like misinterpreting what this network map is really showing you. That is, I think, one of the mm, trickier things about connected papers. Nonetheless, you can go through and you, you know, you can um, drag this around, but you can't change where they're positioned, which is interesting to me. I don't know what's up this way. Like this is 2018, this is 2020. I think it's just like a node, you know, this one's further away, which means it's not as similar to the other ones um, according to its AI. That's why it's a bit further away. So it's good in some ways that it's kind of like not movable because obviously then you can kind of get an idea about all of the stuff and what it's trying to tell you. So it doesn't have an X, Y axis, unlike other tools like lit maps, which we can talk about in another video or later on, whatever. <sighs> so many tools. I like to use connected papers really for only these two things. One, prior works and derivative works, it seems to do that better than any other tools that I've used. However, Research Rabbit can do that if you go here to earlier work and later work. But like I said here, you know, we've got work from here 2007 and then later work, anything up to, here we go, 2021, um, all the way up to 2012, 2013, 14, 15. So it's not giving me any 2020, like four or 2023 papers. Uh, nonetheless, you can look at later work. Whereas connected papers, if I go here, you can see, I think we get something a little bit later. We get a 2023 paper. Um, and it, I, I've always found it just a little bit better for prior and derivative works. There we go. That's probably why I would use connected papers over Research Rabbit. So if you want to just every so often, once or twice a month, look for derivative works and prior works, then you can use this for free. Love it. But I would say that Research Rabbit, once you get over the hurdle of learning what it's actually showing you, how it's showing you, and you get over the fact that it's just like vomiting out information, it is very, very powerful. So stick with it for a little bit and see how you feel about it. Another thing I like about Research Rabbit is that you can actually upload all of your um, papers through Zotero, something that Connected Papers doesn't do. So overall, I think this is the summary. This is the big summary, all of that talking for this, I think, that Research Rabbit is a great option for PhD students because it's free, it's just got quite a learning curve and you need to go into it with a action plan because it does get overwhelming and confusing if you just want to explore. However, if you do just want to explore, go on to Connected Papers, use the free version for a little bit. There we are. You can, I think, explore a little bit better using connected papers. If you don't have a game plan and you just wanna go in and sort of like find things, I think connected papers, prior works, derivative works, I think does work a little bit better. Um, and there's no reason you can't use both of them. But I think as a daily driver, I think lit maps is still one of your best options. I, I just like it. I think it makes sense um, in so many different ways. So I know this video is entitled Research Rabbit versus Connected Papers. So I think Lit Maps is a little bit more user friendly because even in the free option, you've got this option where you can get 20 um, papers. Uh, so this is lim limited to 20 inputs because I've not paid for it, but it's more powerful because we can change the X and Y axis. Um, and it's just a little bit easier to navigate, I think. So so um, Research Rabbit would be my pick if you want to stick with free stuff and it is so powerful. Connected Papers, really great for just sort of like double checking your blind spots on prior and derivative works. Um, and I think that's where that ends up. 
So I think when I speak to students about Research Rabbit, they always say, I'm super confused, it's annoying, just give it like a couple of days, you don't have to do anything crazy with it, but I think once you get used to the user interface, it is the best free one that you can use out there, and it's gonna stay free forever, so if that isn't a good reason to use it, I don't know what is. So let me know in the comments what you think of Research Rabbit. If you wanna know how to use Research Rabbit effortlessly, check out this video.